The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of KSMQ Public Service Media Incorporated or its assigns. Welcome to Health Connections. Tonight we will be discussing chiropractic treatment for migraines, lower back pain, pediatric care, and other afflictions. Stay tuned. You're watching Health Connections. Welcome to Health Connections. I am your host, Stacy Beecham. Chiropractic care is now the most common complementary medical practice. It has been called a profession at the crossroads of mainstream and alternative care. If you have questions about tonight's topic, the number will appear at the bottom of your screen. Our operators are standing by to take your calls. Tonight we have with us Dr. Faye Bolingberg of Bolingberg Chiropractic in Austin. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. In a recent study, 127 migraine patients having at least one migraine per month were divided into two groups for comparison. Subjects receiving chiropractic adjustments reported substantial improvement in migraine frequency, duration, disability, and medication use following two months of treatment. One in five participants reported a 90% reduction in migraines and half reported significant improvement in migraine severity. What do you, how do you account for this? Well, first of all, I think a lot of people classify headaches as migraines, but there's several different kinds of migraines or different types of headaches. Mm -hmm. Migraines are just one type of headache. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing here with the, the, the migraines and the connection with chiropractic is that migraines are inflammation of the blood vessels, and that needs to be reduced in order for those migraines to go away. Um, migraines can be caused by some kind of distraction or some something such as um, things that you eat or um, maybe certain activities that aggravate the, uh, the actual neck and the uh, blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I think you have to first of all decide what kind of headache it is. And um, chiropractic seems to really be effective in treating migraines. And it's effective in that it does what? Well, it reduces that pressure mm -hmm. on that blood vessel. And what we do is what we call a chiropractic adjustment. Mm -hmm. So we are reducing the pressure on not only the muscles around that area where the blood vessel is, but also the vertebrae, taking the pressure off of the muscles to reduce that overall tension in that area. And if we're talking about in headaches in general, you, you mentioned there are di several different kinds. What would tension headaches be attributed to, generally speaking? Um, mostly muscle, stress, um, biomechanical, misalignments in the neck. Those are probably the top three for, for tension headaches. Stress is a big one. Okay. And teeth grinding or locked jaw, what about those? Well, the whole TMJ issue, I think there's a connection there because, first of all, that can be caused by stress and tension. Okay. And when you have that tension in your jaw, just in general, that whole tension can distribute itself back into the neck and vice versa. The, ne the tension in the back of the head can come around and cause tension into the jaw and the muscles in that area. They can work together. So we work with dentists. Dentists refer to us. We refer back to the dentist if those kinds of things occur. Okay. And we've also heard about menstrual migraines or different sorts of migraines. I know we talked about different sorts of headaches and that migraine is one of the types of headaches, but there's also different sorts of migraines or at least different causes, right? And menstrual yeah. hormones are certainly one of them. Um, what, what can you say about that? That's mainly related to hormones. And hormonal changes can cause an imbalance and those types of things can cause some migraine-related headaches. So obviously, if that's why the migraines are occurring, 
there's going to have to be some kind of an adjustment with that. And so that's going to probably need more medical care mm -hmm. and some type of an analysis as to where those hormones are and if there needs to be some adjustment in that area. So you're talking about women who are going through menopause, you're talking about PMS and, and those types and those different periods in the, the actual life cycle, probably more prevalent at those times. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're, that's what that was my next question. Are you seeing teenagers with migraines? More, or are you seeing middle age? What kind? What age group are, is experiencing? Oh, it's everywhere. Just everywhere. I see young kids with them. I see, you know, the working force, a lot of stress and tension out there. I see elderly patients, but probably not as much with the elderly. It's more probably with the working force, 20 to 50 year olds. Um, but I do see them with younger kids too. And you you um, indicated earlier that maybe these headaches are are another type of headache. Maybe they're not migraines. Maybe we're kind of confusing that term and and not really knowing exactly what type of headache you have. Maybe it's a tension headache. May, how can we differentiate? What would a migraine be versus another headache? Well, I think first of all, people will come in with a quote unquote migraine type headache because that's probably what they hear. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more of a, an understanding or they hear it more. Mm -hmm. um, but you have tension headaches. You can have sinus headaches. You can have cluster headaches. Um, and then migraine type headaches. There's many different kinds. And I think first of all, you have to figure out what the source is or the cause of it is. And then from there, the treatment. Okay, and if someone comes in while, is it more beneficial for you as a as a tr as a care provider to treat the person while the headache is occurring versus someone coming in and saying I don't have a headache right now but I get them often um, is it can you tell can you treat them better you know it it really doesn't matter if they come in during those headaches I mean that is not uncommon we'll have calls and we know what who those patients are most of the time too um, because they've either had a history of that. So that patient may spend 30, 40 minutes in my office that day. They'll come in, I'll work them um, in and, and um, do a lot of muscle work on them, first of all. Because again, when you have a headache, you're stressed, you're tensed. I mean, this is, it's like your head is going to explode. And so you, you need just to kind of go into a dark room and we'll first of all, start out with just relaxing that patient, maybe just doing some muscle work on them, um, trying to get those muscles loosened up. Then we might, Put an ice pack on them for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. again, to try to reduce some of that inflammation. So we get them a little more comfortable, get them out of that pain cycle, or at least try to start doing that, so that when I actually adjust them, then the adjustment goes better and they're not so tense and tight. And you, you, typically, that person probably isn't going to go back to work that day. If you are a migraine sufferer, you know that it wipes you yes. out. And yes. it, it is something that you just don't want to uh, go back to work with. You're probably going to take the rest of the day off and just try to rest because it is very, um, it's overbearing. I mean, it just really wipes you out. So I think what I'm hearing, if you're a person that has a migraine, possibly chiropractic adjustments and massage therapy could go hand in hand in treating in treating your migraine Absolutely. symptoms, is that correct? Yes, and any of these types of headaches, I think it's important to realize that, first of all, the main cause of these headaches from a chiropractic standpoint, when we see the chiropractic is beneficial for these type of headaches, what we're finding is that the vertebrae is not in alignment. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. You've got a misalignment of the vertebrae. It actually moves out of its normal position. Hmm. You have muscles that attach to that vertebrae, to the bone, you have nerves around that that come out from the spine. And so with chiropractic, what we're doing is we're actually releasing that tension off of the muscles, releasing the tension off of the nerves, and releasing, hopefully, that overall pain factor there by getting that adjustment or releasing the, the, the pressure biomechanically off of the spine. And you had told me earlier that people actually come in with maybe back pain or neck pain and as a as a byproduct of the treatment their headaches go away right and we'll see that you know you'll have people that might come in for neck pain mm -hmm. that may be something that is a residual that they have or upper back pain um, and they come in for those two things and they may mention on the side you know that I'm a migraine sufferer but they don't always realize that chiropractic can help with that. I mean, this is just something they've lived with for years, seriously. And so I have patients who have never had chiropractic care before coming in for unrelated issues from, their, from a migraine, 
and just been amazed that their migraines not be, might not be totally gone, mm -hmm. but we can certainly help reduce the total all overall intensity and the frequency. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that, that we commonly find with migraines is that they're medicated. And obviously, there's a need for that. I mean, if you've had a migraine, you know that that type of a, a medication is your lifesaver. Sure. I mean, it Absolutely. is a huge, huge, important factor that you need to have. Um, so we want to make sure that that um, people realize that um, that the the overall treatment can help reduce that and give them a better quality of life. Mm, that's wonderful. I'm sure the migraine sufferers out there are really happy to hear that they have another option. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's talk a little bit about other things that you do in your practice. How many years have you been in Austin now? 19 years. Oh, 19 Going years. Going on 19 years. That's on the, in the 19th year right now. Okay. Yeah. And from the time you started here or started chiropr your chiropractic profession, um, your career, Till now, have you seen a difference in the patients, the demographic? Um, are you seeing more of one age group or less? Are you, seeing, are you seeing symptoms or ailments that you hadn't seen before? Has that changed over those nearly 20 years? You know, one of the things that's unique, I think, about Austin is that it's an older community. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of geriatric patients. Okay. And um, so you're dealing with a lot of chronic conditions. Okay. Um, that's, that's a pretty high percentage. Um, but also, I have noticed lately, probably within the last 10 years, that there is an age group of about 30 to 45 that truly values their wellness and their health care. Mm -hmm. And they know that the quality of life is more valuable to them than anything else. And they realize that they want to feel good and they want to continue to feel good. And so they, I think that group of people have really focused on um, alternative health care. Um, they've focused on just general health. You know, I think they're eating better. I think generally they're exercising more. I think they're, they're understanding and educating themselves on what they need to do to be healthier. Um, and hopefully that's getting passed down to their kids too so that there's another generation. But um, that's probably one of the things that's exciting to see because you are seeing a lot of those professionals that are valuing that and they're coming in not necessarily always because they're in pain but they know they want to feel better and chiropractic is one of those um, occupations and one of those uh, areas that it's becoming I think more accepted you know we see it more accepted with just a general population mm -hmm. people are, are uh, it's not that we're quacks anymore, you know? I'm not hearing that as much. Right? No, I agree. <laughs> when I first started out in practice, I, I would have to say that, you know, there was some real hesitation. Mm -hmm. People questioned what we did. And, um, but I will say this community has been wonderful with working together. I mean, I mentioned earlier, you know, we work with the dentists, with mm -hmm. TMJ. Um, we work with the medical profession. Um, Austin Medical Center has been wonderful. I mean, if I need an MRI, boom, I send a patient off for an MRI and there is no hassles. It's just, and that's not always the way it is with mm -hmm. all um, it's all great healthcare. when you can perform or form that sort of partnership. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've um, got a good um, relationship with the other chiropractors in town too, but we're working with other healthcare professionals. Sure. Acupuncture is another really good one, you know, that um, uh, if, if a patient uh, needs some other kind of um, uh, something additional to what we're doing. So we're, we're working with all different areas and I think That's that great. is something that that general population is seeing too. So chiropractic is just one of those things that that um, seems to be moving up. And certainly health care providers, including chiropractors, must be doing a good job of educating people as to how to improve their overall health and wellness for them to come in and seek this on their own without injury, injuries or something else stimulating that visit. Right. Well, That's I wonderful. Think in general, patients really want to try to get away from medicating themselves and having to get to a point where they have to be surgical. Right, so, and I think we're all aware that chronic pain is a big deal, yep. and we want to prevent prevent that, mm -hmm. and so that we are never a chronic pain sufferer. And you know, I think a, a good point to that is that I see younger kids. You know, I see babies, I see little kids, and sometimes it'll be funny. I'll have patients come in and they'll say, "Did you see that little baby? Is that, or did you see the mom?" You know, they'll want to know. Are right. you really actually adjusting that little baby, <laughs> or? 
was that little boy in here? And, and it's exciting to talk to people about that because, again, I think there's a general idea out there or sense that it's only when you have pain and it's only when you're older mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily need this care. Or an injury. Oh, right, mm -hmm. or an injury, mm -hmm. that you, you, you don't go in until you need it. Right. And um, uh, that's where I was talking about the, the, that age group of people who, who are looking at wellness care. And you're talking to them about their, their kids or they mentioned a uh, comment about their kids maybe having a pain or an ache here or there. And I'll say, you know what, why don't you bring them in? Let's just do a consultation on them and see if it's a chiropractic problem. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, if it is, we, we generally will get them in and, and take care of it. And it doesn't take long with younger kids, you know. Mm -hmm. They're bouncing around, they're, they're falling all the time, they're playing hard, you know. They have a spine too. Sure. And so. <laughs> and they have aches and pains too, right, sure. Right, right. And, and a lot of times we, we don't always, I maybe notice that they have those things. And so um, it's just, I think it's maybe kind of an unknown or uncommon um, uh, perception that we don't necessarily treat the younger people too, but right. we treat all ages from my kids didn't get out of the hospital without an adjustment. Okay, you that's know? interesting. You know? So prevention as well as ailments you'll treat in children. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back to talk about that after the break. Welcome back. There's several things that chiropractic can treat that we are, maybe are unaware of, and I'd like to ask Dr. Bolingberg here about a few of those things. Ear infections is one of those things. Can you treat ear infections in children? Yes, we do. Okay. Let me start out by just saying that. Okay. And uh, one of the reasons is that the nerves that go to the ear mm -hmm. come from your neck. Okay. All right. Yes. And so if that nerve is getting pinched, that nerve isn't going to send the information to the ear to tell it how to function. And is that the same situation in adults? Right. Really? Think of this, this is a good example. Take a water hose and you kink it. What happens? The water stops coming out. Okay. Okay? Right. All right. Sure. That's what happens when a vertebrae is out of alignment and putting pressure on a nerve. Mm -hmm. Makes that sense. That nerve then doesn't send the information where it's supposed to go. And I think back, 15, 20 years ago when I first got into chiropractic, there was a big understanding and, and kind of controversy about how chiropractors could treat certain conditions like diabetes or like, you know, uh, stomach ailments or things like that. There, I think there was a, a misunderstanding there because, yes, we, we can help the general health mm -hmm. of a person that has those things, just like this ear infection, mm -hmm. okay? Your body is working so hard to try to um, recover from the misalignment okay. in the spine mm -hmm. that it can't work how it's supposed to. And so in a child, that nerve gets pinched, all of a sudden that ear isn't healthy anymore. It, uh, it can't function like it normally functions. And so the fluid builds up in the ear. Maybe it's just that the child has pain from that misalignment and their ear is hurting because of that too. And is it possible that babies at birth even are, are you know, jarred in such a way that they're going to be prone to, to ear infections or other sorts of misalignment? Absolutely. Okay. And, and that's one of the first questions I ask the mother mm -hmm. when they bring in their child is, tell me about the birth. Hmm. Because uh, I myself have had three C-sections and I know that they just didn't go and pick my baby out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, right. there, there, there was some stress involved there and there was some trauma to that baby. Sure. Some babies need vacuum extraction. Some babies need forceps. Some babies they have to pull to, to pull out. So wow. those kinds of, of procedures, not wrong, but are traumatic. And those things can certainly cause trauma to the spine. 
just as if you'd Makes fallen sense. down on the floor. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum and talk about your elderly patients that mm -hmm. we referred to earlier. I just had a couple of questions about osteoporosis. Osteoporosis being the crooked spine, maybe you have you could show us exactly what osteoporosis does, but certainly the muscles around the spine are affected by it in an uneven pattern. Can you ease the muscle pain that comes with osteoporosis by chiropractic adjustment or massage therapy or both? What do you recommend for your osteoporotic patients? Okay, well osteoporosis, first of all, is a weakening in the actual bone structure, over. okay? Mm -hmm. So we're, what we're talking about is the matrix of that bone isn't healthy anymore. Okay. And it will actually collapse. All right? So you may not have any trauma involved. Uh, I can't tell you the number of patients that have come in that said all I did was reached into the refrigerator to grab a jug of milk and I felt this severe pain. Or I bent over. Or I picked up a pencil. It doesn't have to be traumatic. What ha the, the important part is that the bone isn't healthy. So then the question is, what, what then can you do? Okay. All right, what right. can I do as a chiropractor? I'm not going to adjust that person forcefully. Actually, if they have a compression fracture from osteoporosis or if their bone structure is weakened mm -hmm. because of osteoporosis, we're going to be very gentle with that patient, yes. okay? Um, and we can see that on the x-rays, when we take the x-rays. We can see that there's a, a tendency towards that. Okay. So we're gonna be very gentle with them. But I think your question too is what other things can we do for that patient? Are there muscles involved? Absolutely. Again, if there is a compression fracture, if that vertebrae collapses, if their posture starts to change because of that bony structure weakening, now you're gonna end up with a lot of muscle soreness. So maybe massage therapy would be beneficial, very gentle massage therapy. Um, I have found with elderly patients, probably the most important thing that we can do for them is mobilizing their spine. What does that mean? It means just keeping the joints moving, okay. all right? We don't have to go in there and adjust them like a 20-year-old to, to move that vertebrae back and forth. They need some just gentle mobilization to keep that spine moving and keep it functioning as the best that it can. Mm -hmm. at this that point. makes sense because mm -hmm. everything tightens up as we get older and gets less elastic, is mm -hmm. that true? Right, so. one of the other things too, I think with osteoporosis, two more very, very important things. They'll, they will come in to me, not necessarily for pain from osteoporosis, but maybe to talk to me about what are some things they can do to help prevent it or keep it from getting worse. Okay. Um, certainly nutrition is a huge part to that. You know, you want to make sure that they have calcium mm -hmm. and the magnesium and the vitamin D, those types of things that'll help maintain the healthy bone structure. Mm -hmm. Other thing is exercise weight-bearing activities, get out and walk, you know, And this very is simple. true for any of your patients sure. with lower back pain or anything, sure. right? To, yep. A healthy body is going to react better yep. to injury or is Absolutely. that correct? And maybe heal a little faster. Yep. And so what would you recommend for your lower back pain patients? I know that's a biggie, isn't it? That's low back pain is the number, one of the number one, if it's not the number one, health care concern as far as cost. It, it, because of it being so prevalent. Sure, I and can see that. So what are some things you can do? Well, you know, people don't always want to hear this, but there may be a weight issue. There, you know, a lot of pressure on the spine. That's gonna traumatize that spine and the muscles. It's gonna weaken it. Um, their job may be their primary factor. Repetitive type activity, lifting activity. Do we need to talk about certain stretches with that patient? Do we need to show them how to lift properly? Do we need to show them and talk to them about um, healthy you know, type of uh, habits like icing it when they've overdone it or good, like I said, good stretches when they are active doing things? Um, what kind of exercise are they doing to maintain that muscle um, tone so that their, their core muscles are strong and can support all maybe the weaker muscles. And certainly ergonomics them. plays a part if you're a person who sits at a desk all day or has a, as an inactive job. What can we do? I've heard people say, get up and walk around every hour or something like that. Do you, do you recommend things like that for people who are physically inactive at, for sure. the majority of the day? I, I highly suggest that to people. Mm -hmm. Now that's not always possible with people's right. jobs, but 
even if you can just get up and walk around just a little bit, it certainly helps increase that blood flow and keeps the muscles and the joints healthier with that. Um, posture, you mentioned ergonomics. I could tell you story after story of patients that come in that we've, you know, don't quite understand what the, the trauma was or what the incident was that caused their pain. And you kind of do your little investigating and play your little detective work and try to figure out, you know, well, okay, it wasn't any specific incident, but what was it that caused it? And you start talking about their ergonomics in their workstation. And, you know, there are people that will go out and check that. And a lot of companies have them right there. Yes. You know, just ask for that. Ask for them to come in and check your station ergonomically. Huge results with that. Interesting. Yeah. That's uh, something I think very few people are aware of. A, an example, and I think this is a really good example. A patient came in, normal patient, usually comes in about once every month or two months just for maintenance care because mm -hmm. this, this particular man is at a desk all day long. And all of a sudden, he starts coming in more regularly, and, and we just can't quite knock it out. He's good for two or three days, and it comes back. Well, so we do our little investigation, and we try to keep figuring out what he's done. Turns out, he went from, my lap, or from a desktop computer to a laptop. His ergonomics totally changed, and it was just bad for him. Another really good one is bifocals. Oh. People don't realize that. But how many of the elderly now are on computers? And they're, they're looking at that screen like this. And their whole posture changes. And all of a sudden, now they start getting more tension in their upper back, tension in their neck, or even the chair. Makes sense. So ergonomics is a big issue. Makes sense. We have just about a minute left here, but I wanted to ask you about tendonitis. Um, who do you see? Who is, your pre who is your most common tendonitis patient? You know, it's probably the younger 20 to 40-year-olds. Um, you're talking about um, the athlete that typically comes in, the runner, the tennis player, the golfer, those are real common ones. Basically, it's an inflammation of the end of the muscle. What can we do to be safe in our activities to prevent this? A lot of times it's just overuse. Okay. Rest, ice it. If it keeps continuing to give you problems, a little therapy like ultrasound and some muscle stim is very, very easy. If that doesn't work, we'll brace it. Try to keep them from, again, aggravating it. If that doesn't work, then it's usually off to the orthopedic, maybe an injection, maybe some other type of treatment, you know, an anti-inflammatory, ibuprofen, or something like that simple to get rid of the inflammation. Thank you, and thank you for joining us this evening. It's very interesting. Thank you for joining us. Next week, we will be talking about more health issues. Please join us on Health Connections. Thank you, and good night.